he took it he took it quite yucky tonga kia waka pakari i temai ebm under construction co-developing tools for enabling aotearoa scale kai tiaki tanga and ebm titled eoho lara tiaroa ngati kahunga nu kai tahu ki muri hiku dan ngati mani a poto desna ngai tahu matafai tiki taipu porotu the three speakers make up the core research team weaving together the wisdom um, of their project advisors and research partners they bring together a long experience working across tikanga, matauranga, Māori, research, academic, creative, governance and policy spheres. I te meninga, I te oinga, huma te paki paki ki te tokotoru nei. Kia ora tātou. We'll start with a karakira. I think it's befitting. Mm. All right. Here we go. Kia hora te marino, kia whakapau namu te moana, hei huarahi mā tātou i te rangi nei. Aroha atu, aroha mai, tātou ia tātou katoa. And this is our extra member of our team today, this is Hene Wai, she's come um, to be our assistant for the day. Ka she chose that karakia. <laughs> and that was the karakia that she chose for us. And she was saying it loud as in her head. Don't you worry about that. You want it done? Go grab a seat with this thing now. Hi, we. Hi. He kau papa nui tera. Oh, tena koe. Ah, katoa i kitimi a kia koto katoa. We hui hui mai nei. Ko toto ko ngam hi ko am here. Hi. We've we've arrived this afternoon after a really heavy tuck here before us. Um, and, and I'm inspired by uh, the resilience shown by, by that whānau. And, and I know resilience is, is a term that, that some don't have a fondness for uh, because it means you've had to endure something tough uh, in the first place and, and we'd rather be in a position of planning for those things and not being in those tough places. Hey or no, the way that those whānau just got in uh, and, and fixed up their whare was amazing. So we've... Here this afternoon, we're going to share with you some of the mahi we're doing on, on this research around trying to understand and co-develop some tools for enabling um, Aotearoa scale kaitiaki tanga and ecosystems-based management, uh, but drawing from, really drawing from that local community basis. We've got a whole day tomorrow to talk about ecosystems-based management, so we thought we'd privilege today and talk focus mainly on the kaitiaki tanga aspects of, of the mahi. Um, and so here we go. Really quickly though, as, as many have said, you know, we are the core kind of people holding the pen, but this is a massive team. Um, and even those people who appear on here are part of the wider team, part of the challenge. Uh, members of our project advisory group, some of whom are here today, uh, Tami, Shanan, uh, Glenn, Catherine, uh, Josie, Miriana and Lee, um, those are the people who are able to come down. The key point we make, we're, we're saying here is that we're just the kaikorero for the day. Uh, the matauranga and the mahi comes from, from the communities with whom we're working. And our responsibility is to weave it together and actually so that they can be kaitiaki in their places, so that they can exercise kaitiaki tanga in their places. Uh, we're racing a little bit because we've got a little bit of an interactive session with you all, so get ready for that team um, and because we're in that dreaded post-lunch slot. But, you know, just we're drawing on some of the findings that have already come through in tranche one, and these are some of the, um, uh, the sharings from, um, from Anne-Marie Gillies and others that have pulled together. And one of the key things um, about kaitiaki tanga is that we're not here to define it. Um, the home people in their places where they're doing the mahi, that's up to them. They know what it looks like for them. We're just trying to understand what it is they want to do and then find the tools that can enable them to do it. And maybe even jumping right to the, to the punchline, we've discovered that it's a complete systems approach. If we just focus down at flex roots or just focus at hapu, um, we can do some stuff there, but actually it's structural as well. We've got to really start from the top, what are those policies, what are those enablers that then can either um, enable or, or inhibit the, the mahi that the people want to do. And now I'm going to tuku the rako to Lara. Hara mai. Yeah, so um, kaitiakitanga is the prerogative of every iwi in hapu to define for themselves. 
Um, and so that's why our project hasn't been about, well, what is kaitiakitanga, what is ecosystem-based management? EBM, they've got the seven principles. Um, kaitiakitanga, um, well, we'll get into that a bit further. But um, as we've heard today, beautiful examples of kaitiakitanga, and it's expressed in whatever way that iwi hapu mana whenua want to express it. Um, yeah, and so in phase one of the challenge, we did this um, some other work, um, and we went and spoke with a lot of people, and this is up at Maitai Bay with Ngāti Kahu, um, and this is Fetu Rutine, and he said, he's got a video, it's online on the website, um, but his main point that I took was, how can you whakamana our whānau around the rohi? And that wasn't to me, he was actually saying that to the Crown, but you know, it applies to all of us. Um, and so we thought about that, and it is like Dan said, a whole systems approach. Um, to us, you know, what's ecosystem at its biggest scale? It's um, papato nuku. We need to restore, regenerate, be enabling across that whole system. Um, and then uh, we also drew from the Mataki Mai Constitutional Transformation um, Report from 2016 from Margaret Mutu and Moana Jackson. Um, and one of their um, frameworks was this one. So that's about empowering Māori um, within each of the three spheres of influence. The other thing about looking at that image of Papatonuku and balance with Ranginui is um, you might be able to see as well there's overlaid a map of New Zealand and on that map there's all these dots and all those dots are marae that are within, I can't remember the proximity, but very close to the coastline and to our awa. Um, and just by looking at that you can see what a network we already have and it's already in place, all that infrastructure, all that physical infrastructure or that political infrastructure or that cultural infrastructure that we can draw on to restore and regenerate our ecosystems on the smaller level. So um, we, we talked a lot <laughs> with a lot of people. Um, and I think before we can get to the dewey, we have to have the hui. You know, um, it is important. No one knows at all, okay? And so we talked to everyone across those three spheres that we could. Um, we went deep and we went wide. So we, we um, have a project advisory group and they are a whole bunch of experts and we are very lucky to have all of them. <laughs> um, and they bring their wisdom and then we yeah, that's the next one. <laughs> um, we also focused on three um, research partners. We had three research partnerships in each of the spheres, one of the each, one each sphere. Um, and so we could go really deep and get to understand what is um, challenging them with their enabling of um, kaitiakitanga and ecosystem-based management. Um, so that was the depth and then the width was with the project advisory group and all the other um, hui that we've had. Um, and these slides now are just examples of some of that um, and examples of embodiment of kaitiakitanga that we've experienced as part of this research. Um, so we've got the virtual reality that was with Ngāti Pāwa and Wahiki, who are one of our research partners. Um, that's Hiniwai being amazed by um, yeah, the VR and the imagery of, it was under the moana, eh, in the moana, the seals and yeah, just, it was, I was really impressed too. Um, and so it's looking at all these different tools and ways that kaitiakitanga is being expressed and thinking, well, how can we scale this up um, yeah, there's lots more, but I, I don't, yeah, I'll try and hurry up. <laughs> Sorry. Um, these are more examples. That's Waiheke. That's um, some stuff we did with the Kawanatanga sphere. Um, Moana New Zealand, we've been working with them as well. 
and that's been really interesting, Kopapa. Um, wish we had time to talk to all these, but, but we've got to this point where we're developing, co-developing some tools. Um, some of them are to help give effect to tetiriti. Um, some of those are finding where you might fit within the system and then helping you, um, there'll be some tools you can click on to help you with your, um, whatever it is you're up to. Um, can you stand up, please? <laughs> and then... Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Kia ora koutanga, mihi nunui. Speaking of, um, well, uh, first of all, uh, sorry, I will talk about our mahi soon, but I just wanted to mihi to the whanau at, um, at Tangitu. Um, speaking of te koru, te po, te ao marama, that's my rohe, so uh, ko rongo mai wahine me kahangunu me ngā te pāhuera, ngā iwi, ko uh, ngai tahu, ma te whaiti, tōku hapu, and um, yeah, we've all been in a state of te koru, te po for, you know, the last month or so, so, um, yep. Uh, I'm really proud of our Fano in terms of the way that they are draw drawing on our whakapapa through those different spaces. So the mana and the tapu and the wairoa, uh, wairoa ho, Modi, that's what has actually managed to pull us through all of these spaces. It's been extremely challenging. Um, and uh, But yeah, what has really sung to me is that whakapapa, as Faya was saying earlier on today when she spoke to our responsibility and our connection with place and that it's more than genealogical, it's actually it's a, a deep feeling of connection with that environment. And so, uh, albeit that I, I'm not living uh, completely on my tūranga waiwai, I'm living down the other end of uh, Kahungunu at the moment, that uh, feeling of the Māori being really damaged at home at the moment, like seeing all of that silt across Papa Tūnuku has been, um, um, it's challenging, but it's a, I can't see a, a more urgent call to action for us to actually just get ourselves together and do something about this. We can't carry on ignoring it. It's, um, yeah, it's fundamentally changed our landscape at home at the moment. So, ngamahi to the whānau that are still uh, trying to survive through that. Um, our, uh, I don't even know how to work the clicky thing. Which one? That's the green one. Big green one. Ah, okay, cool. So we've got um, some postcards here as well. So, um, Lara was just referring to our Pūrāko model, so how do we use our Pūrāko, our ancestral knowings and our ancestral knowledge of place, which is more than just storytelling, it's actually in, uh, traditional encoded knowledge. How do we use that to remind people how they connect with the environment? So we've looked at different ways that we can do that in our storytelling. So there'll be digital storytelling that talks about different types of kaitiakitanga and how we embody those kind of spaces and how we occupy it and how we all have the potential to be tiaki. Um, and also things like the Pūrāko through um, the VR, which we're saying that our little one here has had a play with. So how do we connect with some of our rangatahi and our uh, mā tawaka that might not be able to be at home, so to get in amongst the moana and have that kind of embodied experiential learning that we normally get if we're living in our takiwa. So, uh, yeah, looking at different opportunities to share that type of um, storytelling. So uh, we will get our lovely assistant... Oh, me and the other lovely assistant, we're lovely assistanting together, we'll hand out some postcards and there's some, if you scan the QR code on there, you can have a play around underwater with your phone. Ah, Dan's gonna be our lovely assistant to see. So scan that QR code and it's just a really basic thing with YouTube that you can have a scan around under, sea, um, under the water and get start to build up some of that kind of relationship again with Tangaroa. I'll hand it back to you. <laughs> yeah, so here's just an example of um, one of the tools um, that is being created within the rangatiratanga sphere um, to help enable our rangatahi as well. Um, is it going to fly? Yep. My name and is it's a bit of a prelude to um, another Tatsuki animation that's going to be shown Kaisyaki soon. For animating. Tuatahi, first off, if you ask for help, you will get help. We asked my uncle for his knowledge around our kaupapa and he is very rich in mātauranga so he took us diving to see the pawa which was a major piece to my animation. We needed to see for ourselves to properly know what we were working on. So if you ask for help you will get help. Ask iwi or hapu for tikanga and kōrero around your kaupapa. Tuarua. 
the app I used. I used Procreate because it gave me more of an opportunity to be creative. But it was hard at the start and I wish I had known some tips beforehand so I wasn't so frustrated along the way. So here are some tips to make animating a little easier. First you're going to want a canvas with a good amount of frames to work with. So if you press the button I just pressed in the top right corner, it'll take you to the dimensions of your canvas. I recommend for starting off, you should do 1080 width and 1920 height, which gives you a good amount of layers to mess with. But the amount of layers usually bases off the amount of space on your iPad. Press create and you're off to a good start. Most important part here is how to start your animation. Press the tool button on the top left corner and in there you press canvas and in canvas section you should have animation assist. And this is where your magic happens. Add your frames and start working on your animation frame by frame. When you press settings, you have the choice to how many frames you can see at once and you also have the option to how fast or how slow you want your animation to be. A little trick to colouring and moving an object in your animation is to drag the colour from the colour selection button in your top right corner to the thing you want to colour. And to move it you press the squiggly line in the top left row of buttons and there you will find something called the copy and paste, which literally... Oh is that on? Yeah, but um, that's an example of, so Tawatu Fairley, some of you might know Regan and Carmen Fairley, that's their daughter. She's 15, 16 now. Um, she actually just put that together for me at my request, she's amazing, um, because I'd seen an animation that she has developed for another one of our projects in Sustainable Seas, which I think you're going to see um, this afternoon, um, so you'll get to see the finished product, but she was sharing there the process of what she's done so that others will be able to go out and do that as well, other rangatahi, other older people that also struggle with technology like me. Um, and now... Um, we, we are going to very quickly do this um, survey because it's going to get you all engaged. And um, there's only three slides, so everyone get out your phones or your laptop, please. Um, and scan, either scan that or you can put in menti.com and then the code that's highlighted yellow. I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. So this is another tool, an, an example of another tool that can help you with engagement. Um, do I do it? Hold on. Are you ready? Yeah? <laughs> okay. So hopefully that's coming up on your phones. Oh, uh, wait, do we need to go back one? How do I? Hold on. Yeah. So the nice thing about this tool is that you guys can all put your answers in and you can say whatever you want because no one knows who's saying what. Um, and it can get everyone engaged because you know there's always the shy people at the hui, usually me. <laughs> and you might not want to speak up but you might have lots you want to say so you know this gives everyone an opportunity to say something. And it's actually, for the researchers, it's a really useful tool for getting data. Um, I've used it in a whole lot of different um, contexts now and every time at least one person is like, wow, what was that? It's so useful. Um, and we learn heaps. Okay, next one. Hopefully this works. You guys might have to do it. Has it changed on your guys' screens? Oh, kapai. This is a bit of a play on the Taman or Te Wai stuff that's in the policy, the national policy statement for fresh water at the moment. If we can apply a policy, a Te Ao Māori policy, and use it in one context, then it should be able to be used in all contexts. Just like giving personal um, entity to one river or maunga. If the Crown has the capacity to do that in one rohi, then they should be able to apply the same kind of thinking and be able to embrace and empower and enable us um, in every context across Aotearoa. Okay. I don't know why they're not coming up on the screen. Anyway, we'll go to the next. Huh? Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. 
And one more. And um, while we're doing this last one, I'll just, I want to mahi to all the people who have been involved in our different hui and wānanga and um, had lots of kōrero with us over the last two and a half years. Um, and a, a few of you are here today, so just thank you for your contributions and for being engaged in this. And it's, um, yeah, it's amazing. Massive mahi. <laughs> Okay, Okay. Did we have a last slide? Yes, we did. How do I go back? If we just go back to that last slide, the Kaitiaki Tanga one. I think um, I just really want to quickly make sure everyone gets this as a takeaway. Um, because in the policy and um, planning and those different contexts, um, it's really important for our policy makers to understand that enabling kaitiaki tanga is actually about enabling rangatira tanga, matauranga and tikanga. So it's, yeah. And so that kaitiaki tanga in the RMA has been used and abused, but now there's tamano te wai and te oranga o te tau, and these things, these concepts might not actually mean that much to some of us as Māori, like, but we can think of them as a placeholder that's in there to enable us. Um, and it's an opportunity. It's a koha, really, for everyone in Aotearoa to, um, to enable us so that we can restore Papatuanuku. Because we've seen what Te Ao Pākehā has done to Papatuanuku. So, you know, here's the koha, here's the stuff in the policy, and now we've got treaty settlements and different legislation around the place that are enabling some iwi and hapu, and not to the extent that they should be enabled. Um, and so, yeah, so we need to be leveraging off that and really pushing for that if we actually want to start turning back climate change and things like this. If we're serious about it, then, you know, kia ora. <laughs>